using components with known vulnerabilities and what it is now the name says it's all we are using some components which they have or uh, which contain the vulnerabilities already so here uh, what could be the scenario so what happens is that uh, developers or the people who are working on the code they tend to leave the libraries which are which might be vulnerable so if i talk about the code which is there on the internet as per one of the research by white source they say that there's 96.8 percent of the code on the internet is open source that's a huge amount of code which is open source now if you're using this much code from the internet aren't we supposed to update it on time or fix it on time if there is a flaw that exists in that so what we can do okay so here um if we talk about uh, the privileges as part of the application code we get access to so many uh, things and sometimes i've seen uh, that there are a uh, lot of redundant libraries which are used which might lead to privilege escalation that has happened and i'm going to show it to you today i'm going to give you the demo we are using untrusted packages which contains the security vulnerabilities one such component could make your application vulnerable now think about if your application has third party libraries which is the normal case which a developers downloads or which a person who's working on the development piece downloads but if there are hundreds of libraries and out of which there are 10 libraries which are vulnerable and you don't know about it will your application be vulnerable absolutely that will be vulnerable so these libraries can actually give full permission to the attacker it can lead to remote code execution it can lead to many more vulnerabilities here this is the attacker scenario wherein uh, attacker tries to make a request to the website and let's assume that this this request loads a page which has the vulnerability and the website responds to the request which discloses the vulnerable component let's say if it's an apache we'll get to know that it's a apache server and this is the version that people are using so once the attacker finds out that this is a vulnerable component in the version what will i do i will only craft the attack which is relevant to that and i will make sure that uh, if i know that this is the particular version it will help me it will help me crafting my attack in a better way and regardless it's easy to find uh, vulnerabilities about any of the software do you need to do it just google it just search on the uh, search engines and you'll be able to find hundreds of uh, attack vectors for that particular version and if i know it so uh, what will i do if i am an attacker i will just go ahead and launch the attack that's what happens so let me show you a screen uh, let, let me show you something so this was one vulnerability which came in 2017 17ish around now this was a remote code execution vulnerability on uh, um, like using uh, one of the old uh, version of uh, apache strats now let me go ahead and run it see your i'm using this particular version all right here if you see that what i'm going to do is i'm going to access the application the application is hosted the uh, this is running and now once this application loads it will give you some information so here uh, i have written some scripts and i'm going to uh, just copy them and then going to pl place over there Yeah, it's running. Perfect. Fine. Now let's try to play around with this particular application. Mm -hmm. We are going to just do a simple calculation. We are going to remove uh, execute a command two plus two. So it says okay, two plus two. All right. What else we can do? Let's try and see something else. Here it did not execute. It did not give us the four. Here, 
do you see something different yeah if you can see 2 plus 2 we encoded it and then posted and it gave us the function 4 like give us the result 4 like you're using a calculator and you're asking for the result now the server respond back with that particular value here let's try to extract some other information Do you see this? It also happens in the browser. Now let's try and make some other uh, changes here. So action dot action is one of the libraries that is vulnerable. So I can try and exploit. Uh, I can do the uh, remote code execution. I can perform the remote code execution on the application. So let's try and another thing wherein I want to find the IDs which are available on this particular application. So here I've you are encoded this particular uh, uh, payload, and I'm going to run it. Did I copy it or not? No. Okay, let me copy it. so most of the things look fine what else information i can get do i need to move to i need to remove curl from the uh, from the beginning i could have done command a so this is a kind of suspense that's there do you see this we are able to get the uh, here if you can see that we were able to exploit a vulnerability which is remote code execution now how we were able to do it because we knew that this is a version of apache that is in use and we were able to exploit it and i think this was one of the uh, um, one vulnerability which came out after as soon as equifax was hacked and after uh, that there was another rce was released on apache struts apache struts 2 So here, if I if I talk about common defenses, what we can do, we can identify that what are the versions or the components which are being used, which are, uh, which can be used as a weapon. Another thing is we can have a repository. I have seen that there are many organizations which don't have a proper enterprise application library, and they don't have the visibility on what all applications they have or um, what all application components they are using. And this vulnerability has given us sleepless nights. we have to find if what what are the version that we are using and what what is there so another thing that is there is now this vulnerability is there but how do we detect it like it's a third party component we know about there is a software composition uh, there is a software uh, uh, like secure code review that happens but how about this particular thing like it's a third party library which is not part of my code or which is part of the code but then it's a third party extension and that um, the that might not be reviewed as part of the software code uh, code review or secure code review what should i do so there are certain uh, uh, tools which are available which we can run and figure out whether uh, we have any vulnerable library in our uh, code or not so what i've used is i've used dependency check which is a very amazing tool if you see i am going to run a scan via dependency check so i have installed this dependency check and it's so easy to uh, install it's just a click of a button almost that way and this is one of the script that i've used wherein i've used uh, dependency check shell script wherein i, I am picking up the code uh, from the desktop so i have stored the code which has some jar files and some files which might be vulnerable and i'm running Uh, a report which is in uh, so i'm trying to get a report which is in html format so here you're taking the you're seeing that it's taking a bit of time and then because the first time it takes some time to download the nvd database and from next on where we are doing the delta scans or further scans it is really uh, quick
you can see every status is being listed over here that uh, if we have uh, finished the jar analyzer what kind of analyzer is there and um, i will show you the demo uh, like i'll show you the details about the page so greg has shared uh, that url and uh, that is really helpful like you can take a look at it there is an official page where it talks about what are the uh, languages that are supported uh, what are the different platforms which are supported now this is a place where i have my so it's a flagship project you can go to the projects and you can find all the relevant projects now here you have all the details listed over here and then uh, there's a command line project uh, then you can download it uh, for ant maven gradle and homebrew like i use homebrew a lot so i can just go ahead and try and install if i can install it this is the information that i'm giving but where can i find the documentation so here if you go there's a documentation on git uh, github which is there and uh, if you go here every minute details about it is listed how to resolve the false positives how to work with the false negatives if there's any internet accesses which is required so local nvd database will help but then to update uh, the newer vulnerabilities it is required then if there are any project presentations which are there uh, then there are sample reports which you can showcase if you want to showcase it to your leadership that yes there's a wonderful tool for dependency uh, check which is there and the tool name itself is dependency check you can show it to them let me see if it worked for me yes it's downloaded for me and i can use it yeah l s and i can see if something is there so here i can do a lot of things and another important thing that i want to tell you that uh, uh that these projects are there to help people who are part of the system and uh, who, who want to contribute to it like uh, this dependency check was created by one of the researchers and then there there are multiple people who got attached to it and became the uh, project leader similarly even who are the people who are on call can be a project leader so you can contribute to it